What's going on guys? So Sharknado 2 is coming out later this month. The hype is swirling. There's a great white hype around the great white shark. And that got me thinking, is that part of a new generation of cult movies? What makes a cult movie? We're gonna talk about that very thing today in some of our favorite cult movies. We have a cool panel to chat about it with. First, he is a writer from Comedy Central's Key and Peele. You've seen him on Parks and Rec, and he's also been in a cult movie himself, Hatchet 2, Colton Dunn. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. She is the chief film critic of the LA Weekly, and she also has a book about Tom Cruise and his movie stardom, Tom Cruise, Anatomy of an Actor, Amy Nicholson. Hi, and I reviewed Hatchet 2. I, like I that know, movie. I read your That's review. Good. So let's talk about cult films for a second. Mm -hmm. What makes something a cult movie? The first thing that I would say to define a cult movie is that it cannot announce itself as a cult movie. Okay. For something to have an actual, the, the title of a cult film, it's a, it's a sleeper. Like nobody knows about it, nobody likes it, and slowly it builds up a following. One from the 70s I think falls into that category, Harold and Maud. Um, another film from the 70s that is maybe the cult movie, Rocky Horror. That is probably the biggest one up until now, The Room, that I've heard of where people will go into a large group mm -hmm. into a theater regularly, like say the lines back at the movie. Yeah. I see you shiver with anticipation. So... Um, we started to narrow it down, and we think there are three basic categories of cult films. Okay. A good movie that no one saw, really cheesy, so bad it's good, and then just weird as hell. We haven't put anything in the second category yet, because like, I agree with your categories. Like, really cheesy, so bad it's good? Yeah. The Happening. I don't know if it's that good, even yeah. as bad right. as it is. But it is. It does have some like great moments in there, and it's. I think a lot of it has to do with Mark Wahlberg. His very first line in that movie is ridiculous. He's like talking to students, and he yeah. asks them if they learned about the bees disappearing. Look, I don't know if you guys have heard about this article in the New York Times about honeybees vanishing. He's not a bad actor. He's yeah. done other stuff, and you're oh, like, yeah. he's good. But for some reason, in this movie, he is always off. Every line he says is off. Planning on stealing something. No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. The best cult movies have an earnestness to them. Like the guy who made The Room. There's nothing cynical about that movie at all. Right. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. It is serious. It doesn't seem like there's any... Uh, it's not laughing at yeah. itself at all. Although he says, in retrospect, Oh no, I was making it as a comment. Bullshit. <laughs> that, that, that thing, that thing is idiotic. How much is it? It'll be $18. Keep, go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Um, Troll 2, I think, is uh Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A movie that definitely, like, they were serious about it. Like, mm -hmm. all those actors who were in it were thought they were doing serious work. And, I mean, it is ridiculous. Oh, my God! hear from you guys personal favorites well some of my personal favorites come from john carpenter uh, i'm a big fan of assault on precinct 13 and i love tons of peter jackson's earlier movies like bad taste mm -hmm. and meet the feebles i think those guys fall into like this group of like directors who just have a love and a specific vision uh that they i call want. it f-u-n like you watch that movie and it's fun you could tell that the director was having fun and that they have that i you know that element of cutting corners because they're just trying to get their idea made mm -hmm. and make it happen and it's not polished it's not fresh but it's just a silly fun idea yeah that's, that's what i love about movies amy any favorites yeah there's a couple there's a small cult of us film critics who are really worshiping at the altar of mcgruber like that's a movie that when when i left the theater i was like everybody loved that right and then everyone hated it and i was so confused yeah but I feel like history will bear me out. And then I want to give kind of a shout out to one of those accidental cult movies. Uh -huh. like, have you guys heard of Miami Connection? I haven't. <gasps> so in the 80s, there was a Taekwondo master and he had a Taekwondo school and he wanted to make a movie highlighting his students. So he made this film called Miami Connection, released it only in like three or four theaters in Orlando and in Miami, it made zero money. They called him up like decades later and they're like, we found your movie. And to me, that's the way a cult film should go. Are there any movies that are considered cult films that you're not a fan of? I would say I would say you have to be careful in that if, and it's that it's okay if you don't like a cult movie that's okay because that cult movie is for a specific person or personality and they'll be the, they'll really be a cult point. movie for you sometime you'll yeah. find yours but like a cult movie 
it has, by definition, in its name, it's a, a cult is small and specific. Not everyone's going to mm-hmm. like it. If everyone loves it, it's this sleeper. That, mm-hmm. like, yeah, of course people love a good movie when they realize it's a good movie. Um, are there any uh, cult films that you are like, mm. Well, I just, I do sort of object to this deliberate cultification. I object on principle to Sharknado. I just object. Yeah. A really sad example of it is what happened to Snakes on a Plane. You know, because that was a movie that was made to be kind of serious. And then when it became an internet joke eight months before it was released, they added in stupid jokes. And then the uh-huh. movie didn't actually work. Yeah. Like, by trying to capitalize on the potential of making a cult movie, I think they killed it. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. Yeah, and to what you're saying, yeah, like the Asylum films, I mean, yeah, there is some kitsch and fun to it. But a lot of it is, like, soulless. And it's like... Well, those guys are just like straight up thieves, right? Yeah, I mean well, like the, the let's be honest, the the that company, yeah. their whole goal is to just make a movie, you know, like say Alien's gonna come out, they'll come out with a movie called Alien. Yeah. You know, right before it, and their whole goal is just to make money. So Oh, instead of Pacific Rim, they did Atlantic Rim. Yeah. Instead yeah. of Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, they did Abe Lincoln yeah. versus the And it's kind of like what we were talking and about before. Did, like, I think the Snakes on a Train, where a snake snakes on a train. swallows a train. Yeah. yeah, and so it's like you have the low budget, you have the cutting corners, but you're missing that crucial aspect that we talked about where there's an artistry to it. There was a passion behind it, and that doesn't mm-hmm. exist in the Asylum movies. Mm-hmm. They have the low budget, they have all that, but there's just yeah. no passion. Yeah. Sincerity is the one. That's thing why they should hire buy. me to write their movies, right? Because I'd bring the passion the to passion. it, and they could keep it just as low budget, and I could just write the craziest <laughs> shit. And then Amy, <laughs> then Amy would review and it. She can review it, uh, and you'll talk about it and on I'll Screen talk Junkies. About it right here on wow. Screen Junkies. We come full circle, everybody. <laughs> so, what's your favorite cult movie of all time? Leave us an answer in the comments section below. The best answer, we're gonna send you a Screen Junkies T-shirt. I want to thank my guest Colton Dunn. Amy Nicholson, boom. And I also want to thank a good friend of ours, Jamie Rogers. Jamie, happy birthday. Thanks for watching the show, buddy. And I want to thank you for watching. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye-bye. Now, 20 years later, they're back. But this time, we are bringing the fight to them. And in space, everyone can hear freedom ring.